So looking at all the new arrow designs, there's tons of new arrows out on the market. And we're gonna show you some of the tried and true arrows that have been around for quite a while that tend to be really, really popular. One of the first arrows is a gold tip, black label arrow, uh, and it is a new arrow. It's uh, 8.2 grains an inch. It's about two to three thousandths in the straightness. And the diameter is 0.295. So it's a standard diameter carbon arrow. This particular arrow is actually has a four fletch on it, which has been really, really trendy the last probably two, three years. A lot of guys are going back to four fletch. That's something we used to do 40 years ago, guys. It's, it's not a new idea, but it puts more steering surface at the back end of the arrow. So for guys having broadhead problems, uh, it tends to help steer the broadhead a little bit better. And uh, that's what guys are looking for is good, clean broadhead flight. There are some downsides to four fletch that you need to know about is that one, it slows down your arrow a little quicker, more surface area on the back end of the arrow. And also there's 25% more surface area to hit your arrow rest. So understand there's positives, there's negatives when it comes to anything. Great arrow and a lot of our guys are shooting this right now. Moving on to Easton product, uh, Easton Axis. This has been a workhorse arrow for them for years. This is a five millimeter arrow and it's about nine grains per inch. The wall thickness of this arrow is, is pretty thick, and so it's probably one of the most durable arrows you could actually shoot for hunting. Super popular, it's been around for quite a while. They're now making it in a long range four mil for guys that want a super micro diameter arrow. This particular uh, arrow takes hit inserts, which means the insert slides all the way inside the shaft. They come with standard inserts, or you can actually get a 75 grain brass insert that breaks off to 50 grains if you want to get a little bit more front and center weight on this arrow for better penetration and downrange momentum. Super great arrow, especially for durability. Going to one of the big boys, the ever popular Full Metal Jacket, also an Easton product. Uh, this arrow here is going to be about 10.2 grains. It's a 400 spine arrow, which is going to be something that, that Ron would be shooting in uh, for the proper spine. This arrow here is a carbon arrow that's wrapped with aluminum. That's why it's on the heavy side. It's specifically designed to give you a heavy payload. Again, you can get the 50 or 75 grain brass inserts with this arrow. These arrows are generally always pushing 500 grains or more uh, when they're in your bow. That gives you really good downrange momentum, great penetration. Uh, but it's going to slow your bow down. Lots of my guys are losing 20 feet a second when they go to this heavy arrow. So understand, again, there's positives and negatives. Heavy arrow, great penetration, 5 mil, but it will slow your bow down a little bit. Moving on to some Victory arrows. Victory is a California-based arrow manufacturer, been around for quite a while. Uh, this is probably the, one of the most popular uh, micro diameter arrows we sell. This is a VAP low torque arrow. Uh, it's 0.166 in diameter. It is 7.9 grains per inch in the 400 spine. Uh, this again, you can get standard inserts or you can get inserts all the way up to 95 grains for this arrow. When you get into that heavy insert of 95 grains, a lot of these arrows are gonna be pushing 500 grains, give or take a little bit. So if you're looking for a micro diameter arrow, it's, it's really, really a nice arrow and you can get a lot of weight in this arrow. The low torque in this arrow basically is that when your arrow gets slammed with the bowstring, the back end of the arrow torques and flexes quite a bit. And they have done a real unique wrap in the back of this arrow that stiffens it up so it doesn't get a lot of torque. So the energy stays in this arrow. These are great for maximum penetration. The, uh, it does take an outsert, not an insert. So you wanna make sure your outserts are installed and on really straight to make sure your broadheads fly great. But another really nice high-end arrow to look at. We're going to put these together and see what Ron likes. I'd like to talk a little bit about Easton arrows and why I chose this Axis arrow for my uh, Ventum 33. One of the reasons is I wanted that uh, arrow to make this bow shine. This is one of the best bows I've ever seen in my life. It makes me look good. It's an, am it's an amazing bow and I want to give it the tools to let it shine and, and really show what it can do. So I've chosen this Easton Axis arrow. I'm gonna give you my personal reasons why I chose this arrow, and then I'm gonna give you the science behind my decision as well. First off, I've shot Easton my entire life. I shot it in college, it's helped me win tournaments. Um, it's been a great arrow for me. Took me through my hunting career, most of my hunting career, which is still going on, but it was definitely part of my bird hunting, and you may have seen the trailer, pheasant hunting with the bow. 
How to Hunt Pheasants with a Bow, number one in the world, almost 12 million views. Thank you for watching, by the way. And we're going to be releasing that, uh, the full movie, for your charge just shortly. So look forward to that. So with that in mind, that arrow has gotten me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pheasant, dove, quail, chucker, grouse. Yeah, I said dove. So don't recommend that. It's more difficult than it seems. Uh, but it's been great for pheasants and got me plenty of wonderful meals. Uh, that axis arrow um, is also one of the straightest arrows I've ever shot. Now, Don Whitney, a member of the club that I belong to, We Shoot Recurs, we do a lot of bear shaft tuning. Just like typical guys at a range bragging, one guy says, I can shoot 40 yards, bear shaft, the other guy will say 50, 60, pretty soon we're up to 70 yards. And I don't know who started it, but somebody said, I shoot a tournament bear shaft. And then somehow I agreed. So we both shot our local tournament. Uh, it's a large tournament, uh, pretty good size. It's called uh, the BC Shoot, uh, put on by San Francisco Archers. Two day tournament. And we both shot it with no fletching. Um, like I said, Don's a great shot. He took first, I took third. Now, I would have been thrilled <laughs> to take third, even with fletching, but it was one of the most memorable tournaments I ever went to because people would come up and they say, you don't have any feathers or fletching. And we just rely on the, uh, the old line from Trezor Sierra Madre. We'd both say it like simultaneously, feathers? We don't need no stinking feathers. And we'd shoot another bullseye or whatever we were trying to do. Had a ball. So that's why I use axis arrows, and that's my personal reasons. Let's get into the science behind axis arrows. Other manufacturers will weave, will roll their uh, carbon fiber on. You'll get a prominent spine on the arrows. These arrows are wrapped. It's called their nanotechnology, which means there's very little spine difference, which means you can shoot them any way you want. It's going to be a true flying arrow. More importantly than that, because it's woven, it's extruded off the mandrel of the rod and cut, each arrow is exactly the same, unlike other ones that are wrapped and there's inconsistencies. So my whole thing, when I bought arrows in the past, I'd buy my dozen arrows, and I did it this time, I'd order another couple dozen arrows. I usually get three dozen arrows because I want it from the same lot number, I want the same people working on it, I want everything the same. You don't have to do it with this arrow. From my knowledge, Easton can produce this arrow two, three, five years down the road, and it will be exactly the same as the one you buy today because of their technology and the way they create this arrow. Another thing I did, which I've never done before, is I went and got this match grade, which means it's one one thousandths, I mean, it's straight or straighter. Doesn't mean it's out that much. These can be perfectly straight by any standard we use, but they can be no more than one one thousandths out and that is incredible accuracy, and you'll see it in your performance, I have with mine. So that's why I choose Easton Arrows, and that's why I chose the Axis. Now I did go with the five millimeter diameter. Very skinny, very heavy, very fast, great penetration, but it was large enough that I could easily put my Luminox, the glowing Nox that I like to use. They have a four millimeter that's really attractive, super, super great penetration, but it was a little more difficult to get the great arrow flight. So I chose the five millimeter, super strong arrow, easy to put the glowing knocks that I use from Luminox, and you can fly this thing and it's like a dart. Another key point I wanted to mention about the Axis Arrows is they have this hidden HIT, hidden in, uh, insert technology, and these long inserts really help support uh, the arrow, really make it much more durable for any breaking if you actually hit a log or something crazy like that. The other thing is when you get uh, your inserts in the, with your arrows, they're gonna come with these aluminum inserts just like these. They're 16 grain. But if you buy the kit of brass ones, these are the brass ones here, uh, they're actually gonna come in a 75 and 50, so a 25 knockoff. So basically these are 25 grains. So these are 75 grains, pair of pliers, break it off, and boom, now you got a 50 grain insert. Now that's gonna give you a whole bunch of extra options when you're trying to get this arrow to fly correctly. And that's what we're all trying to do in archery is get an arrow that flies like a dart and that's what we want, what, like they say, straight as an arrow. That's what we're looking for, and that's what these inserts will help you do, make it much more easier, because normally you only have a couple uh, field points that you can change, 125, uh, 100 to 125, that's it. 
this is going to give you way more options. I got a cell phone. I'll put it out. You can see the numbers. Again, if I got my numbers wrong, go ahead and write in the comments because <laughs> I'm not a math guy, so I hope I got it right. Hey, we're going to be working on some arrows today here at Archery Only. It is an open shop, so we're going to have some other activities going on. We're going to be using a torch, so we're going to make sure we get rid of all flammables. We'll do that now. And we should be a little bit safer with that. Let's get into our arrow bag. been excited about getting my hands on these arrows here. These are the Easton Axis match grade. We'll pull out a shaft. And what we're gonna do is we'll go to the arrow saw and we're gonna cut these down to the length that we wanna shoot, but we'll leave an inch or two on. So we'll have a little bit of play room. So we're gonna get over and cut these arrows. Okay, now that we got our arrow, the first thing I start off with is hot melt. Uh, you can get a low temp hot melt uh, from Easton. Uh, you can get it from other manufacturers. This is some of the hot melt that we have in the shop. And it's a low temp hot melt. And so what I'm gonna do is get our torch going. And it's always a good idea to wear some type of eyewear. Anytime you're working around flame. We can turn that down a bit so it's safer. There we go. And we're just gonna heat up the tip slowly. So we'll get the tip and we'll heat it up. Get it nice and warm. And then I like to just touch the bit of the glue and we're just gonna put a tack on, a tack of glue. We're not gonna put on a whole lot of glue here. We don't need to. Put it in the arrow, push it in, let it cool. We just want it, as you get used to making arrows, you can actually feel it here. It's warm, but it's not super hot. You'll know just how hot you can get it so it'll stick. Now remember, we're just tacking it because we're gonna epoxy these in later. And I usually do about two to four arrows. Again, I got three dozen arrows. So I got some arrows to play with to get to that perfect arrow. But that's what we've done. We've gotten this arrow and I usually mark the arrows with a permanent marker to know which ones have the hot glue because they'll never go on a real hunt or a tournament. Those will be purely epoxy. These are my testing arrows. When you're cutting your arrows, the smallest amount I'll ever cut is a quarter of an inch. Uh, you'll actually notice some change in the spine my experience, half inches uh, in that increments when you cut the arrow. Uh, remember, when you cut the arrow, uh, be careful on how much, how liberal you're cutting because you can't put this stuff back on. Now, when you do cut it, you know it's gonna make the arrow stiffer. It's shortening the arrow, the spine's the same, it actually increases the stiffness of the arrow. Um, I use three different tips when I'm testing. I use 125, 100, and a 65. And the 65 is just a prover point. So if I feel I got the perfect spine, I will actually take the 100 off or whatever I'm using, I'll put the 65 on and it should show that the arrow is too stiff. And then I'll put the 100 or 125 back on and I'm getting great arrow flight and I've proved my point. I like to prove everything to myself uh, when you're shooting. So with that in mind, we're gonna use some denatured alcohol. We have it here in the shop. I have a bunch at home and we're gonna clean our components thoroughly and we'll also dip it in the um, alcohol as well. This is a Q-tip, which I use. Just get it wet. And we'll clean our arrow. And I've already cleaned one side, pretty good. Spin it around. And we wanna have it come out fairly clean. They'll come out black. When you're cutting the arrows, they're gonna come out black. That's pretty clean as far as arrows go. We'll show that close up. Uh, once it's clean, then you can go ahead and clean all your components thoroughly without alcohol. And then they're going to stick and they're going to hold great when we use our epoxy for our final setup. Everything else is hot melt and I only do a couple arrows at a time until I get that arrow flight that I want. Okay, we know our arrow's still a little too weak, so we're going to have to remove our glued in tip. We, used the, we just tack, tacked it in for the hot melt just for uh, a few targets. 
and we're going to shorten our arrow. So we're going to light our torch. Turn the flame down a little bit. And we're just going to heat up our tip. There we go, got it just right. So we heat it up, pull it away. We have to let the tip heat up that brass insert. So it takes a little bit of time. If you try to rush it, you could damage your arrow. So we're gonna heat it up again. That tip, wait. I can usually feel it's starting to get warm here, which is good. Another one, so we're gonna put our pliers on it. See what we get. Not ready yet. Wait a little bit, let the heat travel down. We don't want to get it too hot. We'll try it again here. Got our tip out. We can set it down where it stays clean. Turn off the flame. And now we can go cut this arrow and get it ready for another flight test. Okay, cut an inch off the, the um, blank. We're gonna get our torch going again. We don't have to retack the glue because there's already glue on that insert. Even though there's very little, it'll be plenty to uh, hold what we need. Careful, this could be hot. So we're gonna pick it up. This won't take much, a little warm. Maybe a little more than that, put it right in here. Boom, it's stuck and it's ready to go for our next test. Remember to turn the torches off all the way and make sure they're off. All right, let's go test this arrow, see how it flies now. Okay, by shortening the arrow and adjusting the uh, arrow rest, we have gotten the two bear shafts to fly identical, or at least for my capabilities uh, with the fletched arrows. Again, that Hoyt Venom 33 is just grouping these tighter than I can imagine, so it's been fantastic. So now we're gonna epoxy our tips in. One of the things to consider with an axis arrow is you actually wanna remove the knock before you glue your inserts in. By removing the knock, when you place your insert in the arrow, it can actually build up gases. Axis uh, uh, arrows, Easton products, are, the tolerances are so tight that they can actually create pressure in here. And this is a slow acting epoxy. So remember, all your bonding agents, your epoxies, the longer they take uh, to cure, the stronger they are and the more flexible they are. The faster most epoxies are, the more brittle and weaker they are. And what happens with that built up gas, it can end up pushing your insert back out the arrow because it's been trapped. So you remove the knock to eliminate that. That is not an urban legend. I have contacted Easton and I've confirmed that that is what they want you to do when you're using these inserts. Remove the rear knock, put them in, let them set. And what we're gonna be using is our Easton insert tool, which is this little green insert that comes with every single one. We'll load our insert and then we push this in right to the stopping point Pull it out slowly, set your arrow down, leave it level, let it sit for a day, 24 hours, and it'll care, and you'll have a perfect setup. One of the advantages with this, our inserts are so accurate uh, with Easton, is you're gonna get your very best uh, broadhead alignment. They're gonna be completely straight. A Little more work that you take the knock off, but it's worth the trade off to get that accuracy. So we're gonna open up our epoxy for our Easton arrows. They have a little cut line here. Take our scissors. We're going to extrude it out on this paper, so I save Wayne's cardboard here. We push out the complete packet, so we get an even mix on the epoxy catalyst combination. And then I've just cut the tip off of a Q-tip just to bend, blend my epoxy. Remember, we just talked about it. We've removed our knock, so I'm going to place in an insert. So I use a field point as well as the insert tool. And we have cleaned these, but I'll just make a quick wipe. 
and then I dip it in the epoxy and I run it down the entire shaft getting it all the crews. Take out the tip. I insert it in the arrow and I rotate it back and forth in and out getting that epoxy all the way. Now before my brass goes all the way in I unscrew my field point. At this point I push it in with the arrow set tool from Easton, slowly twist and remove, lay the arrow flat. Tools of the trade, every archer should make themselves an arrow spinner. This thing is worth its weight in gold. You can test your broadhead tips, test the straightness of your arrow. They're really easy to make. Basically it takes four um, ball bearings that you would get from a skateboard. I used a uh, block of uh, maple that was laminated and glued. Um, totally straight. Some people make them out of metal. I did glue this little um, abrasive tip on uh, a sander that I got from uh, my Easton kit. I just glued it on there so if I ever want to straighten my arrows, I just straighten them out, cleans them up so I can get a good tip on for my uh, end knocks. We're going to prepare our knocks to shoot like our lighted knocks. I use Luminox uh, and I know exactly how many grains it takes to, uh, to weigh these out. I use this brass threaded rod and I get this at um, any hardware store, Ace Hardware. Uh, they probably have it at another <laughs> hardware store. I don't know what it's being used for there, but I know it's perfect for H knocks uh, from Easton. These just simply go in, they screw in. And I usually cut them off right here. Cut this off. That right there is going to weigh the same as a Luminox. And what I do is I epoxy these in, dip it in epoxy, put the knock on, a couple twists, let it dry, five minute epoxy, and you got permanent knocks that you have to practice. You don't have to worry about your batteries, your lights getting used up on the range. You can take those on your special hunts for you. Today we have a pro tip for you guys. One of the things we do here at the shop on any of our high-end arrow sales is simply this. Once when we've cut the arrows, we'll also take and we'll square the arrow. And we use a G5 ASD squaring device to do that. It's a simple device. It's got an abrasive at one end. We push the arrow into it and spin the arrow into the abrasive pad. This squares up the end of the shaft that I've just cut. If I can get the front end of this arrow square, the insert will be glued in squarely. The insert's glued in squarely, the broadhead goes on squarely. If we do that, the broadhead will spin like a top, and then the arrow will shoot like a dart, which is unbelievable. So this is something we do for all our high-end arrows, and it really, really adds to the consistency of broadhead flight. One of the other things some of my customers do is that they will pull the knocks off their arrows, and they'll actually square the back into the arrow, even though the manufacturer has done that. Uh, it's just a little extra added insurance to make sure that their arrows are going to be really square and they're going to shoot very very uniformly now if you have a pro shop that doesn't square uh, other high-end arrows you can simply buy a g5 ads squaring tool you can have a shop cut your arrows and then you can simply go home square them yourselves and glue in the inserts so this has been a pro tip hope you enjoyed it i mentioned i used 75 grain inserts to double test my arrows to make sure that with that lighter tip, they should be shooting uh, stiff. The 100s that I have on here are the correct size for this arrow. But if I put on, and these are from my old kits, when you buy your um, tips, a lot of times they come in a pack of eight or 10. These are for older arrows. I just make them work. Right here, I'd have an edge. When I put it in my target, it would either rip up my target or it's really difficult to pull out. But what I've done is I put these in a drill press. Fortunately, my brother has a drill press. You could do it with a hand drill and I spin them and I file them down on the back. So now, easily slide in, they'll easily slide out. I file some off, they're even lighter, which is the point, and that's not a pun with these. Um, you want these light, so basically your arrow proves is it's being stiff, and you'll see it being stiff in the target, and then when you put your 100s back on or your 125s, whatever your end goal is, they should be shooting true.
weak arrow. This arrow needs less bow poundage or a lighter field point or broadhead. Stiff arrow. This arrow needs more bow weight or a heavier field point or broadhead. Okay, it's time to go over all the stuff I got at Archery Only. Uh, got this bag, uh, Wayne calls it a workhorse bag. Uh, I think it's made by Easton. Um, it's a great bag because it has a ton of room. I can put my bow in there, all my equipment, and my hunting clothes, which comes from my surfboard days. When we traveled with surfboards, we would pack our surfboards with our clothes uh, and it would protect it. So I put my hunting clothes in here. So if I throw it in the car and things bang around, I didn't bang up my bow. So let's get to it and see what we got. So why I chose the Venom? I got this Venom. I tried all those bows, and those bows were all fantastic. Some I liked better than others. They all shot great, and I did shoot the Hoyt last. Maybe I tended to calm down, a little less, less nerves being on camera, whatever the case was. But it could have been this lower stabilizer, or I believe that's what it was. This bow would just settle down for me. And you guys have seen me shake throughout the video. I'm a <laughs> shaky chain guy. So anyway, the bottom line is this bow would just stop. Wayne calls it side oscillation. I just call it moving. This bow would settle down and get on target right away and hold. So that's the main reason I chose this bow. Plus it's really quiet and super smooth and forgiving and I need all those. Arm guards I had from my uh, recurve days or still shoot a recurve so I'm using these. This is something new. This is that uh, Extinctant 2 uh, from Stan Slosky. Stan release, um, really cool. If you guys want to know more about it, let me know. I could do a whole video on this release, why I picked it out, etc. Like Wayne says, always put some arrows in. So you guys know I'm using the Axis arrows. Big fan of Axis, probably always will be until they stop making them. Uh, I just like the arrow. Uh, did get a fuse stabilizer. Like it, the price was right. Um, and I found out that the parts were interchangeable with my Hoyt. You gotta love industry standards. Okay, so I got very fortunate there. So I can mix and match and make these exactly the weight that I like them. Um, I got that uh, Mountain Light from Black Gold, the three pins, Wayne said that, I like that. Basically 20, 30, 40, anything after 40, 50, 60, if an animal's out that far, I'm hiking in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a stock on it. So I'm not gonna be taking those long shots, but completely dialable, dial it down for when I'm at the range and I wanna take a long shot. And uh, the Fuse Quiver, again, great product, ultra light, super quiet, price is right, really good deal. I just wanted to talk a little bit about everyone's perspective of archery and bow hunting right now. Right now there's tons and tons of information online about how to tune your bow, uh, front of center on your broadheads, broadhead tuning, walk back tuning, French tuning, paper tuning, tuning, tuning. Uh, there's, you can get down into the weeds extremely fast with archery. And the single most important thing you can do to turn into a really, really good top-notch archer or bow hunter is simply this, shoot your bow. There's no magic tuning system. There's no magic arrow, magic broadhead, magic release that's gonna turn you into a good shot. You are gonna turn yourself into a good shot. I've gone to tournaments and, and shot with three or 400 people and shot one of the, the top five highest scores out of everyone there and chucked my bow for tune when it was all over and I was shooting through the paper a four inch hard left rip. Four inches, it was terrible. That bow grouped really well for me and I beat everyone there with the exception of four other archers. So a lot of this comes down to work on yourself. Go to your local pro shop, take a lesson. If you want something that pays huge dividends, take a lesson, get a shot routine. If your bow's baseline tune at the local store, it's gonna shoot really, really well for you. 
take a lesson, be a student of this game, learn to shoot, cycle your bow. Retuning your bow every three or four days looking for the magic tune isn't gonna turn you into a good archer. Shooting your bow is gonna turn you into a good archer. So with that said, go out, go shoot your bow, and have a blast. Wayne and I had a ball making these videos for you guys. Yeah, there was some time and expense put in, but the bottom line is if you like the video or you felt you got some value of it, please take the time to reach down, hit, hit that subscribe or that like button. The best thing you can do is actually send it to a friend and get them to watch it. And if you didn't like the video, send it to a friend as a joke. <laughs> Either way, hopefully you get some use out of it. Um, let's talk about the cost of a bow. Most of you guys have identified Wayne's the talent in this video. Um, I'm the filmmaker. Honestly, my lenses cost more than all this stuff. Don't even get into the cost of the camera, but let's relate it to shooting sports. Perfect example. I have people go, hey, I can get a top quality gun compared to this top shelf bow. Cheaper. Possibly. Absolutely. But you're not going to get that gun with a top shelf scope on it. So this bow setup is cheaper than a good gun in the scope. Let's talk about ammunition. Oh my gosh, a couple bucks down range every time you send one. 22s are like 22 cents, and they're hard as heck to get a hold of right now. So the beautiful thing with archery, like Wayne always says, we get to shoot our bullets over and over and over again. This is one of the more inexpensive shooting sports there are. More importantly, if you get a new bow, new arrow, some new equipment, and it gets you out at the range, three, four, five times more a year, it's worth it to me. Brought you that enjoyment. What if you go to a tournament, shoot your lifetime best, beat your buddy that you've never been able to beat before? What's the worth of the bow then? How about it get you to pull the trigger on that lifetime dream hunt? You go with a lifetime friend, a family member, you get a trophy of a lifetime. This equipment, the bow's priceless, the arrows are priceless. So with that in mind, everything's relative. If you love the sport of archery, consider this equipment that's out now. It's amazing. I'm having a ball. I hope you do too. And thanks for watching the video.